Hi there. <clears throat> Chris McCarthy here at SF State. Whenever you've got a source of light, like this light bulb, and a round spherical ball, the ball will be lit up halfway. There's always half of the ball that's lit up and the other half that's dark. But depending on how you look at the ball, what you see could be very different. Here, you're looking at the ball from a line of sight that's pretty much perpendicular to the source of light. And you see half of the lit up side and half of the dark side. But it could be that if the ball goes behind the source of light, you see the entire lit up side. Or if it comes in front, you won't see the lit up side at all. The ball could even block the source of light. Or it could be something in between. If the ball is like this, in other words, between you and the source of light, but off to the side a little bit, you'll see this beautiful crescent shape. You see that on the ball? As the ball moves around to a different position, you'll see it half lit up, and then you'll see more than half lit up. That's what's called a gibbous shape. And this is exactly why the moon has phases. When the moon is between us and the sun, it appears as a crescent. When it's on the other side of us, from the sun, it appears as a gibbous, and it can also appear as a full moon. Let's see that in more detail with another model. We'll use this to represent the moon, just a tennis ball. You can try this at home, by the way. You don't even need a globe like I have. You can use your head to represent the Earth and just hold the ball up move it around your head while you're looking into a light in a dark room, some sort of lamp. Um, so in our case, we'll use this lamp to represent the sun. The sun shines on the earth. The earth is rotating and people on the earth will have the sun shining on them, but as the earth rotates, they will move from the lit up side to the dark side, that's sunset. A person right here would see the sun set at that point. And as the earth rotates around some more, then a person on the dark side will eventually get lit up. It's happening over here until the sun shines on them. And that would be sunrise. Someone positioned right here, directly under the sun, would be experiencing noontime. And someone over here on this side experiencing midnight. Now the moon orbits around the earth and depending on where it is, we on the Earth will see different phases. So let's think about that crescent that we saw before. People on the Earth looking at the moon when it's between the Earth and the sun will see a crescent. And actually, I'm looking at the moon right now, and it does look like a crescent to me. Now, it doesn't look like a crescent to you because you're not on the Earth. You're viewing this from way out there in space. That's okay. I'll tell you what things look like. As the moon moves around, people on Earth will see the moon half lit up when it's perpendicular to the sun. That's what we call first quarter phase. It also looks like this from your perspective, just reversed. And finally, as the moon moves around here, you can probably imagine that people on the Earth now will see the fully lit up surface of the moon. They won't see the dark side at all. None of the moon will seem dark. That's a full moon. When the moon comes around here, people from the Earth will see a half lit up moon. And that's called third quarter. And finally, as the moon moves back here, getting very close to the sun, as seen from people on Earth, these people will only see the dark side of the moon. In fact, they won't be able to see the moon at all. That's called a new moon. We can also in addition to these phases, we can also see why eclipses happen and sometimes don't happen. If the moon is new, directly between the Earth and the Sun, it's possible for the moon to cast a shadow on the Earth. That would cause a solar eclipse for whoever was on the Earth. Similarly, it's possible for the moon to orbit around and fall into the Earth's shadow and that would create a lunar eclipse, an eclipse of the moon. Now, these don't happen every month. There's not a 
solar eclipse every new moon, nor is there a lunar eclipse every full moon, because the moon's orbit is actually much wider than what I'm showing here, and it's tilted. So you can see that if it moves around like this, the moon doesn't always get eclipsed. I'm exaggerating the tilt. But sometimes, at certain times of the year, the moon's orbit, even though it's tilted, is aligned optimally to cast a shadow on the Earth and create a solar eclipse. So with a model like this, you can understand three-dimensionally how the moon has phases and how we can see solar and lunar eclipses. I encourage you to make a little model of your own. You just need a lamp and some sort of ball. You can even use your fist if you want to, to represent the ball.